Hello everyone, this is Professor Robert Solis and welcome to this video lesson. We're going to be learning about Microsoft Excel. And in this first video, what I want to share with you is how to use Microsoft Excel from an introductory perspective. So the first thing that you're going to notice is that you have several different columns. Columns go up and down and they are designated by letters. You also have rows, so row one, two, three, so forth and so on. And then when you click in between any of those rows and columns, you have a cell. Now a cell really is the intersection of a column and a row. So in this case, you'll notice that this is column C and this is row 5. So this cell, therefore, would be called C5. This one over here, say for example, would be called F2 because it's within column F and row 2. Now this cell has a special name. We call that the home cell. It's just the cell that's on the furthest, furthest upper left hand corner. We're going to call that cell A1. Okay, so what I want you to do is go ahead and click cell A1. And let's go ahead and type some something like this. Let's say item 1. Enter. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to have item 1, item 2, item 2 over here actually, item 3, so forth and so on. So I could keep on typing different items like item 2, 3, 4, 5, so forth and so on. Instead I want to show you how to use this fill handle, this little tiny button over here on the lower right hand corner of any cell. If you were to click and hold that and then we're going to move the mouse to the right, notice what happens. It automatically fills in the next appropriate number. So this was item 1, the next one should be item 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, now this right here, this autofill options, if you click that, it's going to ask you, was your intention to copy the cells? Well, then in that case, it's just simply item 1 copied. If your option, if your uh, preference was to fill in the series, which is the default, then we'll click fill series. So you really don't have to click this unless your intention was to copy. Okay, so we have items 1 through 5 over here, and uh, let's say that I'm going to give various numbers to these. Okay, so let's say that I'll say this is um, 60 tab, 70 tab, and so forth and so on. So I'm just simply typing the numbers and pressing tab. And maybe what I would like to do is I would like to obtain a sum of all these items. So I will select cell F1 and I'll type in the word sum, press enter. Okay, now if I want to obtain the sum of all these items, here's what I can do. First of all, I'm going to make sure that F2 is selected. And then I'm going to press the equal symbol on the keyboard. Now the equal symbol indicates that I'm about to type a formula or an equation. And in this case, I want to add cell A2. So I type A2, then plus on the keyboard. And I want to add it with this cell. So I type B2. And then again, I press plus on the keyboard. I'm going to do the same thing with C2 plus D2 plus E2. Press enter. So you'll notice that the number 400 appears in cell F3, so or F2 rather. So you're thinking F2 has a number 400, but that's not true. Actually, the contents of cell F2 is an equation, and here it is in this formula bar. So in the formula bar, this represents truly what's inside of the cell. And in this case, it's A2 plus B2 plus C2 plus D2 plus E2. So anytime you're going to type an equation, always begin with an equal symbol and then type those cells that are that are going to be added up or uh, perhaps multiplied or whatever the equation is. Okay, so in this case I have this equation and uh, what I want to do is I want to have uh, all these items represent quiz scores. Say for example for students, so I'd really like to see a list of students. Uh-oh, looks like I have a1 or column A is representing the items and really column A should have been student names. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on top of column A1 and you'll notice that I have an insert option. So with this insert option notice how it pushes everything to the right. Well now I can go ahead and type in the word student. Okay so I have student over here now let's say that these represent grades for the student. So this is going to be Robert and then we're going to have Kristen, Joshua, Jackson, and Rosie. All right, so I have all the names of the various students, and I want to have grades for each of the different students. So in this case, I'm just going to type in random numbers here. So I'm just typing numbers, two-digit numbers, anything below 100. Oops, sorry, that's too high, something like this. 
and then I'm going to press enter and I'll use the arrows to go over here for Joshua and again I'm just typing in numbers randomly on the keyboard whoops I shouldn't have put anything here on some and I'll do the same thing for Jackson and finally for Rosie we'll type in some sample scores for her as well okay now what I would like to do is I would like to obtain the sum for Kristen as well as Joshua Jackson and Rosie well I've already determined what the sum is for Robert now one of the things I could do is I could enter another formula or I could use this fill handle this fill handle says take the formula that's in this particular cell and apply it if I were to drag this thing down apply it for all of Kristen's scores and if I continue to drag it down it would apply to all of Joshua's scores and if I continue to drag it down even further for Jackson and Rosie let me give you a demonstration so I'll take this fill handle and I'll drag it down just one to one cell and notice that it says 362 for all of Kristen's scores if I took this and I dragged it all the way down it would do the same thing for the remaining students so it's applying this formula for all the bottom formulas. Let me hit Control Z, Control Z again for undo, so we go back to here. In essence, what this formula really is doing is it's saying add everything to the left of this, beginning from B2 all the way to F2. So it's saying add all these numbers and put it over here. So when I take this fill handle and when I copy that equation down here, it's in essence doing the same thing. It's saying take all the numbers to the left of me and add them up and put them here. That's really what this formula is doing. So again, the fill handle can be very handy. I'm going to hit Control Z. The fill handle can be very handy in turning a 30 minute problem to a 30 second problem. All right, this was one way to add a bunch of numbers. Let me show you another. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press delete on the keyboard. And what delete on the keyboard does is it basically clears the contents. So I know that delete sounds like it's deleting. But in the Microsoft Excel program, it's not deleting. What it's doing is clearing the contents of that cell. OK, so what we want to do is we want to add all these numbers in a different way. So I'm going to press equals because that's what you do to tile Microsoft Excel. I want to add a bunch of numbers or subtract a bunch of numbers, whatever. You're going to enter an equation. All right, instead of typing, I'm going to click. And then I'll hit plus on the keyboard. Whoops, sorry, plus. There we go. And then I'll click the next cell. Once again, I'll hit plus on the keyboard. Click this cell, plus. Click this one, plus. Click this one. So that's another way of entering an equation, namely just using the mouse and also you're pressing plus on the keyboard. I press enter on the keyboard, and again, the sum is 400. You can see what the contents of G2 are revealed over here in the formula bar. OK, I'm going to press delete again on the keyboard, enter. I'm going to go back over here to G2. Let me share with you another way of adding a bunch of cells. So if I said equals, I'm going to type the word sum, S-U-M, parentheses. Okay, so what this is looking for is a range of cells. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to place my cursor on top of B2, click, hold down the mouse, and I'm going to move the mouse. And what this does is it creates a range of cells. So I'm going to let go right here. So this thing where it says B2 uh, colon F2, what this is is a, a range of cells from B2, there it is, and everything included all the way up to F2. So from B2 to F2 and everything in between, let's obtain the sum. So I need to close the parentheses. So shift to zero, press enter, and once again, 400 is the answer. Now, I know it looks like 400 is inside of cell G2, but that's really not 400. 400 is the manifestation of an equation, and the equation is add up the numbers from B2 to F2, namely add 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, and put the result in here. Okay, I'm going to press delete yet again, and then go back to cell G2. So you've seen all these different ways of entering an equation. Another thing you could do is you could click auto sum. Now, if you click this drop down button, it gives you all kinds of different functions, and you can even list all of the functions in Microsoft Excel. But if I just click this guy over here, this is the Greek symbol sigma, which typically means summation. If I click sum, notice what it's, what's happening here. Really, Microsoft Excel is asking me a question. Here's the question. Do you want me to add all of these cells? And the cool thing is Microsoft Excel is intelligent enough to know that Robert is not supposed to be part of the equation because that's a, that's a word. But all of the numbers 
is your intention, says Microsoft Excel, for me to add all these numbers? Yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. It looks like it got it right, so I'll press Enter and 400. Okay, so now you have several different ways of how to add numbers. Let's do that again. Now I'm not going to use the fill handle. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click Auto Sum. This time I won't click the drop down. I'll just click Auto Sum. And once again, it asks me, do you want to add all these cells? Um, no, I want to add all these cells. No, that's not right. Yeah, what it had originally was correct. See, so I can change different selections. Press Enter on the keyboard. Perfect. Okay, now watch this. You're thinking when I click Auto Sum again, it's going to add all the numbers to the left. But now what it does is it adds all the numbers above. See, if there are two numbers above this function, it's going to assume that you want to add the numbers above. I don't want this. I want the sum of everything to the left, so I'm going to click, hold down my mouse, move it, select all the way to item 5, let go from B4 to F4. That's what I want to add up. And then I can press Enter. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit delete over here, enter, delete over here, enter. And I'll just simply take this equation, take that little fill handle, drag all the way down, let go, and that automatically adds the sum for Kristen, Joshua, Jackson, and Rosie. Here are the summation uh, amounts. Okay, so that's how you work with functions or equations, you or formulas, I should say. Now you just start off with the equal symbol. Okay, what I'd like to do also is I want to obtain what the percent is. So I'm going to type percent, press enter. All right, um, the percent is basically whatever the student got in terms of the sum divided by the maximum possible. Um, I should change these from item to quiz. So let me type in quiz one and then press enter. And then I'll select that cell B1, take that fill handle, drag it all the way across, and then let go, and now it replaces item with quiz one through quiz five. Okay, that looks good. So what I want is I want the percentage for Robert. Does he get a 90%, an 80%? What, what exactly is his percentage based on a score of 400 for all of his quizzes? Well, if each of the quizzes is worth 100 points maximum, this would be equal to 400, or Robert's sum, divided by the maximum possible, which is 500. So I'll press the equal symbol on the keyboard because I'm, I'm going to enter an equation. Then I'll select G2. So I just clicked it. The reason why I select G2 is because that's Robert's sum. So it's located in this particular cell, divided by, which is the forward slash, and then I'm going to type 500 and then press enter. Okay, so 0.8 is the answer. Now, that doesn't look like a percent. But this really is. It's the decimal form of a percent. If I take that decimal, move it over to the right two times, that would be 80%. But no one likes to see the decimal form of a percent. We want to see a percent. So the nice thing about the number group is that I can select this guy over here, which is called the percent style. I'll click it, and now it reveals the number to me as a percent. That's nice. That's what I want, the percent style. But I want one number after this um, after the decimal point. So with this cell selected, I can use these two buttons over here, increase decimal or decrease decimal. If I click increase decimal, notice what happens. It adds a number after the decimal point. I can click this again. Here's another number after the decimal point. Now I just want one number after the decimal point. So I'm going to click decrease decimal. And now I only have one.